Westward Expansion, Lesson 2, Mr. Fulton's Journey. Today we're going to listen to a story titled Mr. Fulton's Journey. We are going to learn about an inventor named Robert Fulton who had a very important invention that changed the way people traveled from one place to another during westward expansion. Please listen carefully to determine the main topic of our read aloud and to learn about this invention that changed the way people traveled during westward expansion. First core vocabulary word, inventor. Inventor means a person who invents or creates a new product. For example, Benjamin Franklin was the inventor of bifocals, eyeglasses with two sections for near and far vision. Second core vocabulary word, journey. Journey is an act of traveling from one place to another. For example, my family went on a journey to the beach last summer. Third core vocabulary word, steamboats. Steamboats means steam-powered boats. For example, we enjoy watching the steamboats travel up and down the Mississippi River. Fourth core vocabulary word, voyage. Voyage means a journey. For example, Columbus's first voyage to America was in 1492. Fifth core vocabulary word, design. Design means to create the plans for. For example, Engineers continually work to design cars that are more fuel efficient. Image 2A1, Fulton greeting woman in pink and her husband. As she stepped from the dock onto the boat, the lady in the pink dress held a matching pink parasol or umbrella above her head. It was a sunny August day in 1807 in New York City, and she wanted to protect her delicate skin from the sunlight. She smiled at one of the boat's owners. Mr. Fulton, she said, I hope your boat will do everything you have built her to do. The lady's husband shook Mr. Fulton's hand and said, It will be a great day if you succeed, Fulton, a great day indeed. Then, the couple walked forward to join the other ladies and gentlemen already on board. The man whom they had greeted, Robert Fulton, wore a confident smile, but inside he was terribly nervous. He thought to himself, If all goes well today, I will be rich, and people all over the world will know my name. If I fail, I will lose a great deal of money and be laughed at as a dreamer and a fool. That must not happen. Image 2A2, Livingston standing next to Fulton. Fulton felt a hand on his shoulder and turned to find his business partner, Robert Livingston, standing at his side. Robert Livingston was a wealthy, important man. He had worked for the government both in the United States and in Europe. Many years ago, in 1801, while Fulton was in Europe doing business, he met Livingston at a restaurant in Paris. Fulton told Livingston, what I am working on right now will forever change the way people travel and the way in which everyone does business. Image 2A3, Fulton and Livingston in Paris, Diagram of a Steamboat. Livingston's eyes lit up with interest. Tell me more, Fulton, he said. Well, as you know, an Englishman has invented what he calls a steam engine. Basically, you light a coal or wood fire inside of a furnace to heat a boiler of water. When the fire gets very hot, the water is also heated and steam comes off of it. That steam is fed to an engine and provides energy to power the engine. 
Yes, I've heard of this steam engine, Livingston replied. Please continue. I'm sure you have also heard of steamboats. Actually, I have, said Livingston. Fulton continued. Well, Livingston, I plan on building one, but my steamboat will be much better than the ones already made. I shall use steam power to turn paddles on the back of the boat. With steam turning the paddles, the boat will move more quickly than by using human muscle or wind in a sail. Extraordinary, said Livingston. That is not all, Fulton continued. My boat will be flat on the bottom, not curved. This will allow us to carry more people and products on each voyage. Picture a whole fleet of such boats, Livingston. Why, the owners would become richer than you ever could imagine. Image 2A4, Fulton and Livingston shaking hands. Livingston noticed that Fulton had used the word us, as if he were already sure that Livingston would join him in on this project. Livingston didn't mind. He agreed to help fund the plan, and the two friends became partners. Livingston knew that Fulton was not the only inventor working to design a steamboat, but the two men thought Fulton's design was far better than any other. Image 2A5, on deck for maiden voyage. After many years of countless improvements to the boat's design, the day for the steamboat's first voyage had finally arrived. Now standing on deck, Livingston said, Those were our last guests coming aboard, Fulton. We can begin our journey whenever you are ready. Fulton turned to his boat's captain, who told him, The engine is all fired up, sir. I'll await your orders. Then let us begin, Fulton answered. The captain called to several sailors. Cast off bow and stern lines. The sailors untied the thick ropes holding the boat to the dock. Then the captain turned to the pilot, whose job it was to steer the boat, and told him, Take us to Albany. As the guests on board and the spectators on the dock began to cheer, steam began to pour from the boat's smokestack. The steamboat was on its way. Image 2A6, Map of Route. The plan was to travel along the wide Hudson River from New York City to the state capital of Albany, stopping briefly at Livingston's home in Claremont, New York, which explains the name of Fulton Steamboat, North River Steamboat of Claremont. Not only did the steamboat have to make the trip safely in order to show that steam travel would work, but the boat also had to move faster than other types of boats or no one would see any reason to switch to steam. As the viewers on the dock watched the steamboat paddle away, some people said, I don't see how they will ever do it. Others said, let's wait and see. After all, this fellow Fulton convinced Robert Livingston, a man who controls much of the river travel in New York, that his plan would work. Image 2A7, safe arrival in front of crowd. The believers were right. About two days later, a second crowd stood cheering on the dock in Albany as Fulton's steamboat puffed into view. The steamboat had taken less than two days for a voyage that usually took sailing ships four days. Congratulations, Mr. Fulton, said the lady in the pink dress as she and her husband stepped off the boat. Many didn't believe it could be done, but you proved them wrong. Shaking Fulton's hand, Livingston said, Congratulations, Fulton. New York will never be the same. No, Livingston, Fulton replied. The world will never be the same. Image 2A8. Map showing two rivers with steamboats. Robert Fulton was right. Over the next few years, the two partners set a whole fleet of steamboats afloat on the Hudson River and the Mississippi River. People realized that steamboats were faster, much cheaper, and much more reliable than other types of transportation. There was only one problem. Steamboats needed rivers to travel on, 
and there were no rivers between some of the biggest cities. So people still couldn't use steamboats to go everywhere they wanted. To end today's read aloud, we will be doing a discussing the read aloud using comprehension questions. Question one, what is the main topic of the read aloud? Question two, what was the setting of this read aloud? Question three, why were Robert Fulton, Robert Livingston, and others taking an important journey on the steamboat? Question four, was Fulton's journey a success? Question five, why do you think Robert Fulton worked very hard as an inventor? Question six. Why do you think Robert Livingston agreed to be Robert Fulton's business partner? Question seven. What was the advantage of a boat powered by steam rather than by people or the wind? Question eight. What was the disadvantage of the steamboat travel? And question nine. How do you think Mr. Fulton's steamboat changed westward expansion?